Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Burning Wheel. So, uh, yeah, I'm again joined by everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. How have you been doing? Hi. Good. This is how I've been doing. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that is that is true. I I, I suffer with you. Yes, suffer. Oh, uh, maybe I should change my name on Skype. Actually. <laughs> Perhaps. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> fly on the wall. Um. On Skype? Or no, not Skype. Uh, my display name in uh, Roll20 is Fly on the Wall. Yeah, maybe. This, maybe this is last time. It's odd. Changing it to Minomia Ka uh, Kachka could be helpful. I don't know. Who is this Kachka you're talking about? Do I know him? The duck. Perhaps. The duck on the wall. Perhaps. All right, so let's let's talk about let's talk about what happened last time uh, to get back to like an idea of where we're going, and um, then let's talk about our bits. So, does someone want to? private. <laughs> uh oh my, no, matron, please. No, but does anyone want to uh, want to handle that particular ball? What happened last time? I could try. I only handle balls in pairs. <laughs> what 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 what? All right, let's hear it, AJ. I totally lost the thread right there. <laughs> Give me a second. It's fine. What happened last time? Right. We were going to find out what happened with his product. That's true. So he rolled a circles check. That's also so true. So he failed his circles check. Yes. But we found out there was a guy who could help. And we found out that guy hated him. Also that he weren't easy to persuade. And then we got our ass handed to us, and he's dying. All of these things are, in fact, correct. So yeah, what... Uh, I mean, essentially you... I believe you started out by examining the body of the, the dead guy you'd found with the, with the green-tinted yeah. version of the product, and All right, you, yeah. you subsequently failed your perception checks to unveil what had actually killed the person. Um, first, uh, I believe... Uh, uh, it was uh, my lovely brother who looked at me and said, "You can do that." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Without actually knowing if I knew what the hell a dead person looked like. So, so essentially, I, just throwing well, the ball to you. He he suffocated, and our esteemed friend, who's now dying, were like, "I'm not sure. I believe you." And then the other twin looked at it and says, "Well, he did suffocate, bitch." And still not completely convinced, he wanted to find someone who knew more about stuff like that. It's true. And wanted to find out what had happened with an alchemist. Cut to the scene where we are having our asses handed to us and I realize, hey, I have alchemy! Yep, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I have actually... Um... I have taken it upon myself to to uh, sneak into your character sheet and sort your skills alphabetically while time has been passing between sessions. But that's not as fun. No, I know, but uh, hope hopefully uh, it it will lead to you having a better grasp on your character's capabilities than being like, oh wait, I had that totally key skill we needed. Yeah, have you done that to all of us, or just for? Just for um, uh, you know, I believe uh, you and Rasmus had already sorted yours alphabetically before we started. Actually, that's good. You did that for me, so thank you for that. You're welcome. I okay, mean, that's fine then. Usually not really necessary, but in in this case, with the format of the character sheet in Roll Twenty, not dissing the character sheet, the character sheet is lovely, but with the format of it, uh, it the skills become a long list to scroll through, and it's not easy to have a clear overview. So I, I find it personally easier. To sort through if it's uh, alphabetical. So anyway, but yeah, you you uh, hit the nail on the head there, AJ, uh, as fittingly metaphorically connected to the fact that your um, recent employer uh, got struck on the side of the head with a cudgel. Um, you are, in fact, you just just you just recently escaped the the clinic of um, of uh, Doctor Kroba which was situated above some place where they store barrels down on the harbor front. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and followed by your brother in his somewhat exhausted raven, uh, not raven, uh, falcon form, you have oh, now... If you want to, it could be a duck form. 
Probably. would it would be wonderful. You need to you need to make up a spell that will in fact allow you to take on the shape of a duck. Well, I mean, could I tinker with the spell I already have to make it, you know, into a spell that makes me transform into other animals? You might. I mean, starting with trans going from perhaps a bird of prey to a normal bird, then to an aquatic bird, then to an aquatic animal, and stuff like that. Ab absolutely I'm sure possible. Could, uh... I will. Uh... Sorry. We're saying yeah I'm, I'm saying it's absolutely possible you uh you might be able to do that and exploring that aspect of your of you and your twin sorceress powers might be something you wind up doing in the future or it might not that depends on like your what you your characters do and what the situation is but uh, creating new spells is not outside the purview of characters cool i thought we had to find them in ancient ruins oh you absolutely have but if you want to try and design them yourselves, you could, you could, you know, make the effort. Um, not saying that that's going to work uh, and not saying that that's going to be any easier and not at all any swifter than learning pre-existing spells. Also, no, it I'm, could uh, that's now cool. be more dangerous. And eventually you might write a belief about that. That is totally doable. Like, just write a belief that'll take your character like a 10-year period to, to pull off and then... We skip 10 years and suddenly the world looks different and now you can transform into a platypus. Yay! So then he's 38. It's true. That's still pretty young for such a powerful mage, I assume. Yeah, very much. But you're still a human! You don't live to 300! Is he well, human, uh, though, or is he platypus? Exactly. The, the, lines, the lines get blurred. I'll make a spell to transform into a tortoise while still being able to cast spells and while having like, I don't know, 500 years to live, I'll invent a spell to make me immortal. It sounds perfectly doable. Until we <laughs> cut to the scene where he's being eaten as soup because they caught him and he weren't that quick. Until we, we, no, we get to we, cast spells. we cut to the, the sequence in which I ask you to, to roll against obstacle 20 on 8 dice. Hmm. But no, all of this is totally like, don't don't necessarily knock this out of your head because, I mean, it could well be within the scope of what your characters end up doing. I mean, right now it's not, but it might be. I mean, this is, this is your game as much as it is mine, so. I mean, I've already delved into body transforming magic. I'm sure immortality is somewhere within that realm. Immortality has has recently been introduced to the world, just unfortunately in the shape of murderous invaders who want to enslave or kill you. Oh, so the really? elves are immortal. Pretty fun elf. Elves are in fact completely immortal, yeah. Oh, so they only have that uh, sadness thing to worry about, or yeah. these are Tolkien elves uh, in in that sense. They they don't just live for seven hundred years or three hundred years or whatever. They they are in fact eternal. Yeah, I'll research a spell to turn into an elf. That seems better. Reincarn at least, at least they are by the. Sorry, go on, AJ. Reincarnation. Hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, to do uh, what we usually do in Pathfinder: just close our eyes, roll the dice, and hope for something funny. You are now a cow. Hey, food! No, no, I didn't make you. Moo, moo. All right, let's, uh, so yeah, but essentially that is what happened last time. Um, we got that summarized quite uh, magnificently. Thank you, AJ. Let's talk about your bits. Um, we'll start at the top as always. Uh, Minnow, um, talk us through your beliefs, your instincts and your traits. Okay. Oh, because, that's why you call them bits. every time you say bits, I think naughty things. <laughs> Me too. Sure. Um, <laughs> I, I get that. But yeah, beliefs, instincts, traits, bits. They haven't changed the least. Yep, let's hear what I am. Mm, I'll find a way to remove my brother's curse so he has a chance at a normal life. And to do this, I'll find someone who knows of curses. Yep. I know about curses. I have one. Shut I'm up. Very experienced. <laughs> <laughs> if people seek me out for help, try to avoid them. Arias does a new place for me, so until I can be sure it won't harm me, I lay low with my abilities. Fucking brother. <laughs> Nicholas' business is in danger. Someone has been tampering with his narcotics, and I will find out what exactly has been done to it. 
And now I realized I know alchemy. There's actually a chance I can do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all three fairly nice instincts. You're going to stay with those? Uh, not instincts, uh, beliefs. Yes, I am. Good. Let's hear, hey, let's hear about maybe your... we should let him die. I'm pretty sure he'll kill me if he finds out that you're alchemy. <laughs> 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 oh. Instincts. If I see Shicho getting into trouble, drop what I'm doing and go to his side. Yep. If I see someone attractive, flirt. If surprised, draw a weapon. Wonderful. Yep. And what about your traits? Mm, mark of privilege. That's a die trait. Yeah, that's true. You uh, you look it noble. I is gifted. You are gifted. That's also true. Obscura. And cool headed. And character traits I have base humility. And I'm spooky. Yeah, you're you're the spooky twins. You're the you're your two ghost spooky cousins. Spooky ones. We're spooky. Okay, he's frightening, I'm spooky. I mean, I realize you're both huge nerds, uh, in a sense, uh, being spellcasters, although you're pretty physically fit. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just, I can't shake that image, right? The, the spooky twins, it just immediately defaults to Breaking Bad. Um, all right, yeah, so cool Correct. that we have... Uh, you haven't watched Breaking Bad? No. Nope. You should do something about that. It's an excellent show. Um, all right, let's uh, have the next, the next one up is Nicholas. Beliefs haven't changed either. Belief one. World is a shitty place, knows me nothing. Therefore, I'll take what I can and will, however I can and will. Right now, I will take a recent shipment of lilac cloth to sell for a profit. Sadly, nothing was done about this in the last session, but that's mostly because the more immediate concern of the of the fairy dust uh, got in the way. Belief two. Introducing fairy dust to rare room could set me up for life. I will build up my capital to achieve this. Uh, I believe three, someone threatens the image of my product, I will kill them to ensure they and others never do so again. Uh, instinct one, never offer mercy to an enemy. Instinct two, everyone's out to get me, so trust no one. Instinct three, always carry a sharp knife. Very nice. And traits are, we've got four character traits, <coughs> which are paranoid, odd, nihilistic, and callous. And one die trait, which is Louis Wu, which may cause Nikki to laugh uh, uncontrollably in the face of danger. Yeah, that's oh, true. That's right. He laughed all the way out of the house last time. Yeah. Mm, so, something like that, yes. We now also know where, in, what in fact Louis Wu is a reference to, which we did in the last few times. And it appears, uh, dear listening audience or viewing audience, that uh, Louis Wu is the protagonist of a sci-fi book series called... Uh, what's it called? Ringworld? Yeah, Ringworld. Uh, and I've, I've not I've not read that, so I don't know for sure uh, if this is the case, but I assume the protagonist of that series uh, laughs in the face of danger a lot. Yeah. They should make a trait called Leroy Jenkins. Hmm. I think, I mean, yeah, if you had the trade Leroy Jenkins, I don't believe there's much doubt at what, was to the, what exactly that would entail for your character. Leroy! Yeah, basically, in the face of overwhelming odds, you just charge. I mean, you could, you could, both, you could write Leroy Jenkins as a belief, an instinct, and a trait. Like, it fits for oh. all of them. It would be pretty easy to just write it. You right. would get so much fade out of that. You would. I, 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 I happen to agree with that assessment. You would you have a pretty easy time getting into trouble. <laughs> Alright, uh, and uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Jihauji Kakska, what is your bits? Um, quite large, as I remember. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Um, you're, you're wearing out the wah wah machine. Sorry. Here. Um. 
I, my beliefs, I want to make a name for myself, someone to be feared or revered by any means. As such, I will make a continued effort to become the center of attention in public. Asshole. Sorry? Yeah, I remember that happening last time. Yeah. You definitely, you definitely made quite a show of turning into a falcon and gliding off. Um, mm -hmm. Not as much as you could have, but it was definitely overt, much to the chagrin of your employer and your your sibling. I don't know why they didn't like that. Ass wipe. <laughs> they don't either. They just you're, you're, you're now now you're ass wipe. Oh, the great and terrible. <laughs> I don't want that to be my fame oh, name. Oh, that would be the perfect payback for something he did. Like, this is Asswipe, the great and terrible. And no matter how you'll get around it, you just can't. <laughs> It'll be that annoying thing like, Trixie, the great and powerful. Asswipe, the great and powerful. It'll be my new curse. You'll have, you have uh, two, two uh, henchmen. Um... One short and fat, one tall and lanky. <laughs> what, you want me to be they'll, they'll be called skips and fails. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, my second instinct. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. Your second belief? Uh, well, this is clearly an instinct. No, really. I've convinced Mr. Smolak to let us join his organization, but words are only words if not followed by action. As such, I will prove to Mr. Smolak that my brother and I are useful by finding the person who infringed on his product and destroying him. Perfectly valid. And the third? The third is the knowledge of old holds power on so I will seek it out whenever I have the chance. Yeah, I remember that one. Cool. And let's let's hear it for your instincts. Give me an I. Um, I want to hear your instincts. <laughs> Thank you. If weird shit happens, check if dreaming, such as by pinching self, looking at hands, or trying to read something. Yeah. I will respond to threats with intimidation. And I will ask Minumia for advice if I need it. Very nice. Yeah. Stop doing that. It gets me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, hey, you can look at this corpse and find out what happened. Uh, what? Okay. By the way, uh, as a dude, uh, before we go on to, to uh, traits, I, I want to remind you all of this because I haven't yet. Um, so I want to tell you this so you may in turn help me remind you that this is the case. If you ever do something in character, um, and you feel like this matches a belief or an instinct or it's a trait that, that is getting into play, uh, tell me, like, say it out loud, right? Be like, just point to the character and be like, so I have this thing, so I do this. It is not, um, it's not a bad thing. It is not a, a, a phantom, we should avoid addressing the mechanics of our character and just play them kind of thing. That's, that's not a part of the game. Just... Point to it and be like, so I'm I definitely I'm asking Minomir for help here, for advice, because I don't know. Or because I you know, the, the situation calls for it. Just call it out because that way it's much easier when we talk fate and persona and well, when we talk Arthur. It's much easier to to look back on the session and be like, Yeah, that happened. Right. Okay. This pizza is really good. <laughs> It's your first trade, okay? <laughs> no, yes, that, that's pizza. not a. That, that's not really a reply you usually get. This pizza, oh, wait, is, this pizza is really good. Is is a trade in a, uh, a Ninja Turtles themed Burning Wheel campaign? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, I have four character traits. I have a base humility, so I know how to be polite. I just rarely do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Doing it is something completely different. Yep. I'm totes spooky. I'm obsessed with ancient magics. And I'm a catamite. Because I like cock. And then I have three die traits. 
I have the mark of privilege, funnily enough, like my twin brother. I have an aura of fear, so Poopoo must make a steel test when they get near me. And I'm gifted. And that allows me to turn into a bird. That is, in fact, the, the, the long and short of your gift. I can become great and majestic bird. I can become a peacock. I mean, it's it's easy to sneer at, at the notion, right, coming as we do from a background of Pathfinder and other super-powered D20 games was like, I can do magic equates to, I can destroy the planet. But being able to turn into a falcon is pretty significant stuff from a an in-world perspective. I mean, Yaoji is, is basically a storm druid. It's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, yeah I think so too. All right, yeah. So setting. that's thank you for that look at uh, at Shihaoji's bits. So uh, AJ posted the, the the length and girth in <laughs> in the chat. By the way, wonderful. All right. Uh, so when when last we left off, um, um, Minomia had just suffered a light wound in battle, and uh, Nicholas had suffered a midi wound. Now, as we talked about uh, last session, uh, the light wound will fade over time. It's it's just it's it's a bruise, it's a scrape, it's a bad one, but it, it and it hurts a lot. But it's just that, and it will go away uh, in time. You need to make a health test, you need to recover, but whatever. Um, it's not not so for the midi wound. Uh, the midi wound is bleeding. Uh, the midi wound uh, will continue to bleed and get worse, and it needs treatment. Uh, before it can be recovered. Now, the exact nature and specifics of what happens if this or that when recovering or when treating an injury will get into when we start going about it. But uh, being injured from midi or higher can have permanent ramifications for your character. Now, essentially, if we had played it by rule, um, a midi wound needs to be treated before the end of the session, otherwise it escalates and get worse. It gets worse as it, it kind of it bleeds into a severe wound instead. But as you suffered this midi wound, literally at the tail end of last session, uh, I am going to, to rule um, that instead of you just immediately escalating to a severe wound moments after suffering a midi wound, um, you you need to have the wound treated within the next uh, the next three scenes after game start today. Okay, let's make that a priority then, guys. Well, I already found out that I can actually stop the bleeding. Yes. So That's we good. have more time to find an actual doctor. Yeah, that is yes, a, a definitely a thing you can attempt. So yes, one that won't actually try and kill me. <laughs> All right, so Here, yeah, I stopped the bleeding. Um, I mean, you never know about like now? this this Hippocratic oath bullshit, right? It's just there. I stopped the bleeding, but Minnow, yeah, he only stopped bleeding because there's no blood left. What are you talking about? He stopped bleeding. Wasn't that the entire goal of it? <laughs> Look how nice and dry he is. You He's could use blue. some kindling. He's blue, for Christ's sake. So he wants to be a Smurf. I can't help that. All right, so essentially, just to to get into it, um, not there no, won't be any preface or any prologue to the session or anything. We'll just we'll join you guys um, busting through the door of your HQ in um, in in the the slummy, uh, close packed building stacked on buildings part of the harbor front, um, which we've now named uh, and uh, called uh, the area itself is called Pike Market. Uh, so you you emerge into your HQ, uh, which is abandoned, save for like there's one guy out back and there's one guy in just inside the door, uh, two guards on duty as always. Yep. Um, and you've you've since since uh, moving through uh, the buildings and since suffering your wound, you've stopped laughing. At least you've stopped being compelled to laugh. Although you may have laughed all the way back if you want to. Um, yeah. And okay. you're still you're you're bleeding from a head wound. Yeah. So you emerge into the room. Just a single guy is standing there. Looks up in shocked surprise as you uh, enter the room. Um, 
you you have uh, she house teacher is also sitting there by the table you ate breakfast at seeming to do nothing in particular he's just sitting in thought and it's also looking up startled when you enter uh and we join you there so scene boom and uh groggily uh um nikki's able to just about to say find evelyn and doctor <laughs> Yeah, so... Mino stops. He's probably halfway carrying the guy. And just, sure. You've been supporting I think him? That translated to find him a doctor and Evelyn. Let's uh, yeah. leading, shall we? <laughs> yeah, so you, you say that out loud. Um, and one of the guys, uh, like the, the one guy in the room, um, looks at you, looks to Nikki, then looks to you as you confirm what he thought he heard. And he nods and he, he immediately he's off. Right, he he runs out the room. Good. Uh, not uh, it only takes a few moments for the guy out back to re-enter the room and and basically be there uh, for you. He can't really help because he has doesn't have the capacity to help, but he enters the room rather swiftly. Um, okay. Okay. So what do you guys do? Um, Mino, you said something about stopping the bleeding. At least trying to. Yeah. Uh, do you I, um, it? Yeah. Go on, Chris. Do you, do you at least sit him down first? Are you going to try and perform action? Are you trying to, going to try and do compressions while he's still staggering there, standing up? Because you'll bowl him over. Not. He's going to sit him down on the floor or on a chair that he can't tip out of and try to stop the bleeding. Okay. Because he's missing up the floor and it's kind of yucky. All right, cool. So uh, you you move to do that, right? You, you move towards the table, I suppose, or something. Um readying like preparing to do this uh behind you in in the light of the doorway um a bird of prey lands and assumes the form of a human being if i've understood your your intention correct rasmus um i think to begin with it'll just land and observe possibly flying over and sitting at the table all right with mr old guy so you fly over and you sit there uh would your like the immediate reaction of your teacher is is probably to be like, "Oh shit, there's a falcon in the room! Look out, everyone!" But I also think that he's seen you do this many times over. So mm. when the falcon just flies into the room and alights on on like the back of a chair, I think he quickly pieces together that it's you, and it's like he doesn't really react except to to look from you to to Nikki as he's being li laid out on the table, uh, looking to the falcon and asking. What what happened? What? How did this happen? What came to pass? He's asking a falcon. Okay. It won't be long. The second Mino realizes that Stormcrow just oh he's rebooting the internet. Is he? My God. He has lag. Jihaji is must be very, very, very well off if he's able to afford the internet in a fantasy world with no electricity, computers, routers, cable, satellites, anything like that. It's look, um, look, magic. It's, no? it's yeah, exactly. It's called magic. Okay, a wizard did it. You don't need any explanation. I don't need you to get all precious with me, sunshine. <laughs> You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Oh dear. Welcome back, uh, Rasmus. You uh, you all well and good on your end? Silence. Yeah, I, I hear nothing. Um, are you speaking right now? Because you're not making any sound. He's hmm. giving us the silent treatment. Yep, the, we're getting the cold shoulder here. All right, let's let's see about getting him back in the call. Um, I'm just gonna try and, and call him back up again, and then I'm gonna uh, call you guys up. Okay. okay.
All right, so the call to Rasmus failed, but you guys are picking up. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Hi, Heine. Uh. One day, what one of these days, we're going to have an entire session, and it's not only going to kick off, but it's going to finish without having a technical issue in between. We do have those very occasionally, don't, don't we? Don't jinx it. It does, it does. It does perhaps happen sometimes. I don't know. It's been too long. Well, all right. Let's. I'm not being gonna be able to move from this spot for a while. I have a cat camping on my legs. That sounds horribly, horribly bad, especially in this weather. It is. Jeez. Well, it's not that hot in here anymore, and I'm laying on the bed, and she just draped herself over my legs. There is a normal person's solution to that problem. Hello. Hello. That's a problem. I like when she's cuddly. Yeah, but if it's causing you discomfort, then it's not worth it. I mean, without it addressing is, yeah. my own level of attractiveness, it is insanely hot in here. Um, it's insanely hot everywhere. We're in the middle of a heat wave again. Then maybe you should open the window and catch the breeze, like I did. I have. <laughs> Hello, Rasmus. Welcome back. Danny, he turned into a werewolf and growled at me. I, I, I Era heard. Four oh four. A breeze could not be found. Era 408, someone shot your server with a 12 gauge. Please, con uh, please contact your administrator. <laughs> so, what do I miss? You didn't really miss anything, uh, except, okay, so I'm going to tell you the last thing to happen, and you'll tell me if you heard before. Uh, as you alight on the back of a chair um, next to your teacher, your teacher looks at you and, and asks, uh, how did this come to pass? What happened? Um... Well, then you'll have to remind me, can I actually speak in bird form? I don't believe you can. Now, I have I have not, there is no rule saying you can't, but I have no cause to believe you can. It makes sense I can't. So I look at him and say, Caw -caw! or whatever a falcon says. His brow, his, his brow immediately furrows. He like puts like knuckles to his side and he's like, don't get smart with me. Squawk! <laughs> <laughs> I, um... I fly off and land on the floor, so I don't turn back, balancing on a chair. Wise. Oh. <laughs> this, uh... this to me sounds like a hard-learned lesson. <laughs> yep, it probably is. And then I turn back into a human. Which I in, assume looks rather impressive. I assume so too. What, what does that actually look like? Is it like the... The, like Batman standing up, or is it? Uh, is yeah, it like... exactly. So, especially because before I translated, I put on my hood and make sure my cape was um, mm. done and all that. So the bird lands, and then yeah, it's exactly like Batman uh, rising up. Except this is more rising up because you know I was way smaller before. Except this is not a creature emerging from the shadows as much as it's a blurry, amorphous shape changing out of a falcon and becoming a person who then like rises up. Sure. And then I stand there looking spooky. Absolutely. And the second you do that, Minnow just ruins the moment by stop showing off and get over here and help me. You are, you are showing off has, has definitely uh, had an effect on, on the one guard who re-entered the room uh, from out the back, who is uh, <laughs> kind of kind of takes uh, two cautious steps back away from you, and you swear like out the corner of your eyes, you see his fingers making like a sign against evil. I make sure to you know briefly make eye contact with him. Yeah, he um. So no, like a glare. he's there and pooping his pants. He no he notices you notice. Um. Then I look at um my mentor and says and say, I know as much as you do. And then I look. I casually walk over and assist Minomir with whatever I can help him with. Yeah. So we have a situation where Nikki is being placed on on the table, and. Mino, do you want to attempt to stop uh, his head from bleeding? Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, in that case, uh, let's have a check to, to see if that happens, if you can staunch the flow. Um, Did we remember... Do we remember which skill I had that you said would work? Yeah. There uh, were two or something like that? You have you have the best skill in the game for staunching blood flow. You have bloodletting. Ah, perfect. Um, I that was to get more good. blood out. Well, it's, it, it's, it is both. It is the, it is the knowledge of, of blood-based medicine. Blood-based medicine craft. So cool. you, you make sure to, to evacuate the humors and so on, and make sure pressure doesn't build in his skull and so on. Yes. Um, blood-based medicine. Suddenly now I've got flashbacks to Bloodborne. <laughs> yum, yum. <coughs> so let's, let's talk about that. Okay, so essentially... You you want to do bloodletting, mm. um, which is just. And fine. I want Bradley to help me. He has the same skill. Your your bloodletting is. I mean, it, let's talk intent and task. It's pretty pretty easy, at least as far as I'm as far as I'm thinking here. Your intent is to stop the bleeding, easy peasy. The task is to do that by like, by working like with with stopping the bleeding with uh, with your knowledge of of bloodletting and making sure that that he like his brain stops leaking. Um, <laughs> Just a just a correction. Jihaoji doesn't know shit about bloodletting. Wonderful. But you got bloodletting as a skill. Nope. I got it through the life path, so you have too. Well, he has access to it, but he might not have taken it. Oh, you didn't open it. Uh. <laughs> what would I need bloodletting for? Yeah, for this. What? Who for, needs for, for... medicine? Am I right? That's what I have minnow for. <laughs> All right, so yeah, sure. Let's let's um, let's look at this. So you want to do some bloodletting? Bloodletting is fine for staunching the flow. It's actually excellent for it. Um, so stopping a midi wound from bleeding is uh, a check. It's obstacle one. Uh, but before you do so, let's let's talk about what happens if you fail it. Um, uh -oh. Uh, failing to staunch blood flow doesn't mean it gets worse. This is one of the few cases where you failing does not spectacularly escalate the situation. It's just, no, he just keeps bleeding and dying. Um, so for you, it's, it's a simple matter. If you succeed on the check, uh, he stops bleeding. What happens then is that you've stopped the bleeding, but you've stopped it for one scene. Uh, essentially, you you make it so that him, uh, his wound escalating to severe, instead of happening in the next three scenes, it happens in, in four scenes. So you have four scenes to treat him instead. Hmm. We have um, time to wait for Mr. Doctor. Yeah, it basically gives you extra time to work with, right? So you could make, uh, you could take the time to be extra sure that he gets the help he needs or do something else. Um, so that's a bloodletting uh, check for, from you. Uh, bloodletting requires tools. Do you have bloodletting tools? Actually, no, I have herbalism tools. All right. Then we, we have a little snack in it. We, you can still do it. You can still do it. But uh, not having the correct uh -huh. tools for the procedure changes stuff. Yeah, it gets harder if I'm not completely... That is absolutely correct. Uh, if you do not have the correct tools... Uh, you suffer double obstacle penalty. Okay, so it's not difficulty one, it's difficult. It's not obstacle one, it's obstacle two. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, you want to do bloodletting. Uh, do you, uh, do you uh, have any forks, uh, any fictional positioning? Is someone helping? Well, my brother is helping, but he has no idea what the hell he's doing. Yeah, well, it's, okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about that then. What, how do you want to help? Please don't get in the way, though. Uh, Zhihao, how do you want to um, to help the situation? Um, as I said, I guess I could stick my finger in the wound, or I could follow instructions. So you're basically um, you're trying to assist just by being there and like doing stuff with your hands and holding this in place and doing that. Yes. Exactly. All right. So if you don't have a skill for it, and here's one of the tricks is uh, skills are super useful. 
but um, I don't believe you can assist a skill with a stat. I might be wrong about that, so let me have a quick look. Yeah, I know you can assist a stat with a stat, but let's see if you can help a skill with a stat. Maybe I can use my spear skill to assist him. <laughs> can I just... I'm gonna make the wound a little bit bigger so you have a bigger target to work with. <laughs> it's gonna poke a larger hole in his brain. Um, oh, you know... I didn't need to know that. Also... Have you hmm. never seen, have you ever seen uh, medieval trepanning, Aya? Oh, yeah. Nope. You, you probably won't want to then. I think, by the way, as I'm uh, assisting Minomir, I'll uh, I'll ask. So, what happened? Did you forget he had slept with someone he shouldn't have slept with? He's asking that. Yes. Yes. Mino just looks up, deadly serious. No, that's me who does that. He, on the other hand, apparently killed his son or something. I can see why that would piss someone off. Yep. Then he looks to um, to Nicholas and says, "You really do have to keep better tracks of those track of those things." Uh, fuck you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, I, I found what I'm looking for. Um, a skill may help a skill and a stat, but you cannot help a skill with a stat. So if you don't have anything applicable in your skills, uh, you your best help here is to stand there and, and kind of do manual work that doesn't really aid as much. Sure. I'll do manual work that doesn't really aid as much and provide snippy comments. Okay. So... Your brother attempts to help you, but really, he's just being there. It, it doesn't actually meaningfully affect you. Uh, moral support. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, here's what you... By keeping track on stuff like that, we still don't know that his baby mama is in the same. <laughs> that is absolutely true. But, it's, yeah. it's, but she is. Uh, and so is her husband and your son. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, um, you have the opportunity to work carefully, which means you take half again as much time to do the thing, um, to, to stop the bleeding. But in doing so, you get an extra die. I will be working carefully then. Okay, so... Can I fork in uh, alchemy or herbalism? You, can for you can't fork in alchemy. Because you, A, you don't have the tools, and B, this is not but really I have an al herbalism. This, this is not an alchemy thing. But you do have herbalism, um, and uh, you might like be able to to quickly like um, you know um, quickly um, mortar and, and pestle some um, something that that will help stop the bleeding, right? You can mm. something that will clot the blood, like some of the salves you usually made once to stop bleeding and thicken stuff and yeah, I, I I would allow that. Uh, you can fork herbalism. Um, and that, that counts as a, a use of your herbalism kit. Now, your herbalism kit doesn't have charges per se, but now that you've used it once, um, it is now, it is no longer, it's no longer sacred. Um, if, you have a, if you have a kit that you've not used, you can use it for free one time. And after that, every time you use herbalism after this, I'm going through a die of fate and we'll see if it runs out. Okay. So it could potentially last forever, or it could not. Um, so, okay, you, you get a forking die from herbalism in this case. Um, and I'm carefully, so I get another one there. So you have two modifier for now. Um, your Rasmus, um, your teacher, um, kind of like moses past you uh, as you stand there being unhelpful and, and kind of like waves you off and starts saying, <laughs> st saying stuff that is actually useful. Ooh. <laughs> um, he gives you a helping die for uh, for bloodletting. So right. modifiers are three. Right now it's three. Um, do you have anything else you want to use to increase your your fictional positioning? No, I'm kind of keeping onto my uh, persona, but I could use a fate. 
Yeah, you might use a fade, uh, but wait, wait to use fade until wait you see if there's see any sixes. Wait to see if it actually is needed. Yeah, if there are, if there is any sixes to explode. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, that would you mean you have the. back and observes, by the way. All right. All right. You you stand back and observe. No, no, I sit. Oh, you sit back and observe. I lounge in a chair, <laughs> observing them. Casually watching as the world burns. Exactly. He cool. reminds me of a cat. Yeah, I can see to that. Too. All right. So, um, is that it? Do you uh, do you guys want to argue for anything else that we could add to this dice roll before we do so? Nope. Sarcasm. All right. In that case, let's have a look. So uh, you roll a total. You roll three, three, four, one. Ah, yeah, there it is. So you. This is interesting, right? So this is this is a good point. You start treating him, but your own wound tricks you up. You you start. You're standing uh, there. You're working. You're trying to like stop the blood flow, and all of a sudden, like a pain runs down your arm, and you flinch, and you fail to actually meaningfully affect him. So you, your own wound is subtracting a die that could potentially have, have made this check. So you fail to stop the bleeding in any meaningful, meaningful way. You probably bandage him up, but the wound is still bleeding beneath. Uh, beneath. God damn it. All right. Yeah, god damn it. This takes... Uh, yeah, go on, Chris. Yes, why, how can we all be this rubbish? I mean, none of you are professional doctors, right? You're a smuggler, they're sorcerers. Yeah, that's true. That's the thing is that this this system, more than any system, is really punishing to people who aren't specifically of a profession. You can't sort of be a, a um, you can't be a jack of all trades like you can in certain other role playing systems. You can be given enough life paths or given enough time in play, um, but it's it's definitely it's different because the game kind of lends weight to different professions and doesn't just discount it under the umbrella of oh yeah well this is this is a heel check it encompasses everything from brain surgery to first aid um this it, sort of makes more sense how would a bum and a smuggler know how to stitch people up they, they might they might they might i mean well, you're doing a valiant you know, effort here you know knows how to treat normal wounds you know, uh, you have the snivels here, you broke your arm, let me set it. You'll but he, he's not a surgeon. <laughs> True. Still, yeah. It's first aid, he, he doesn't know surgery. Alright, so you well, you, uh, you guys, you stand around uh, as trying to, to stop the bleeding. Like, for around 15 minutes or so, you just kind of do the, the like some petty finger work. Uh, and it, it in the end, it doesn't actually help. Um, for whatever reason, you just kind of have to throw your hands up and be like, shit, I can't stop this. If well, I did say... If you want, I could try and use a spell to cauterize the wound. No, You're not might. frying him. <laughs> let me just let me just try to, to burn your wound shut with these magical spells I know, whose area, which area is like, it's pretty pretty significant area, but if you're just on the edge of it, maybe it'll help. <laughs> oh god. Alright. Um. You know, actually covers his face with a hand, like, oh, you didn't just say that. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, uh, how do you sense out a, a rare smile? No, it's clearly a, well, a cat smile. Hmm. This is wonderful. Um, let's I see. Did uh, send a, what did you say? That, I was saying, I did send off that grunt to get Evelyn and then a doctor, so... That is true. You did. Uh, AJ, mark a routine bloodletting test on Yay. your character sheet. Mm -hmm. Tell me if I can try again at oh, some yeah, point. I'll... I don't know how long it takes. And, uh, yeah, you... What This is subject to letting it ride, as it's known, which is basically... You've tried it, you've failed it. You have now failed doing this and you can't try again until something meaningfully changes. Like if, if, if there is a wild change to the situation that would permit you to try again, then you might try again. But until then, this is the result and we abide by it. Would these blessed hands actually help? Uh, it, no. helps, uh, it helps recovering. It does. Um, it doesn't help staunching the bleeding. It helps his body um, 
heal naturally faster. Mm -hmm. So it it'll we'll we're probably gonna see blessed hands in work before uh, before the night's done because eventually Chris is gonna want to roll a, a health check to uh, to actually get on top of his injury. All right, so at the end of this, like some time passes, you can't really do anything, but you've like. You know, Nikki can sit back up. His head is bandaged, but it, it's still a shit job, right? It's it hasn't really done what it's supposed to do. You know what? I'm gonna make something that takes the pain away. <laughs> gonna make like an, an anti this an anti pain might... bomb. Well, you could give him some milk of puppy, and then make him addicted at the same time. Well, uh, herbalism uh, uh, herbalism covers like making like making a. a a poultice that would uh, that would take away like uh, the the die penalty for uh, for being in pain for a little while. Mm -hmm. You could definitely do that. See what then? Let's see um, if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken. <laughs> I don't think I am. I would I would say you could definitely do that. I would set it as uh, an obstacle three, uh, obstacle three um, herbalism check. Yeah. And let's see what time that will actually take. It's a medicinal check. So if you said about like mixing the ingredients right now, that would take you. Oh, that, that wouldn't years. take a particularly long time. It, uh, it'd be over fairly swiftly. Yeah, just to be annoying, can I fork in alchemy? Uh, yeah, you would, I would absolutely allow you to fork in alchemy. Do you mean to use that? Um, do you mean to give him the um, the the bomb, or do you mean to use it on yourself and and uh, remove give the penalty? Him the bomb. He's probably in a lot worse pain than I am. Yeah, uh, significantly so. Yeah, and he he probably wants to be at least to see a little clearly, instead of through the smoke of red pain. So if I could remove the migraine that is slowly sneaking up on him, then that would actually help him just a little bit. Yep. If only make him a little more clear-headed until the doctor gets here. Alright. Yeah, so we could definitely do that. Um, let's. Th this is this is subject to, to um, failing rules, so your intent here is to uh, create a product that will uh, remove the the uh, penalty he's cr uh, currently suffering mm -hmm. uh, for for how long are we talking like talking like a brief respite or are we talking like this dulls one die or he, I mean he has two dice worth of of pain going for him right now uh, do you mean to suppress one or two dice and how for how long that'll set the obstacle mm, it doesn't need to be the strongest one just take the top of the pain all right, so one die uh, subtracted from, from the pain he's feeling. And for how long do you want this effect to, to persist? For how long no, are you, is this going to numb him? Just 10, 15 minutes. All right. You know, the kind of first date that this will help you until the doctor is here, sort sure. of ish. Sure. All right. Um, Let's see proof I'm luckily unable to actually find the doctor and kidnap him. That might be. That's a way this could go. All right. So you want to do that? That is perfectly within your capabilities. Um, let's see if you actually succeed. Uh, give me. Uh, here is the the consequences for getting it wrong. If if you win, you get your intent, of course, and you make this uh, yeah. this bomb, this poultice for him. If you fail it, um, you are going to to make a product that will not have the effect you intended. Uh, it will aggravate the pain instead, uh, pushing him up to a three die penalty. Um, oh shit! For let's say an hour instead, so for like, for for a for a while. It's not gonna actually make it worse. It's just gonna sting like a fucker. Yes, if you if this goes wrong, Nikki is gonna have some very choice words. I mean, it's it's I'm it's supposed to hurt sure. before it gets better, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that when he's this good at herbalism already, that he will know if it's wrong and not give it to him. Oh no, no, no. If you fail, you believe it's right. 
right? If you fail, you make it and you're like, yeah, this'll do. And you've, you just, you fucked something up. You added, you added like a bit, a spit of hemlock in there for some reason. And now he's just, now his wound burns accidentally. <coughs> that is, the, those are the, the conditions Perfect. if you fail the check. Do you want to make it? Yeah. The okay. base obstacle is three, right? Uh, yeah, obstacle is free for this. And you get uh, one die for uh, assist Woo! for using alchemy. Uh, do you want... Oh, I'm. Oh, you already rolled. Okay. And that's cool. even a six, but I'm not going to waste it. Cool, cool, There is cool. not even one failure in that. No, there isn't. That's I good. I didn't roll my extra for alchemy, actually. I see you have a uh, plus one modifier from something. That's probably your alchemy. Herbalism modifiers, but it didn't roll more than four. Oh, remember, you have uh, a wound penalty, so it subtracts one uh, dice, uh, uh, one, uh, one die uh, because you have a light wound. Yes. So okay, yeah. So you spend, uh, let's just say, you spend uh, fifteen minutes or so again, um, kind of being like, "Shit, I can't make this work." You sit down, you start working with some of the herbs in your in your kit. Uh, I'm gonna roll a die of fate to see if your kit gets spent in a moment. Um, but at the end of this, uh, you get two things. One, you have a poultice. You can uh, either immediately give it to him or you can mark it on your character sheet. Uh, that poultice will, for like a period of about 15 minutes or so, as per your intent, um, mm -hmm. it will uh, negate one die of uh, wound damage, uh, one, one wound penalty die. Um, and you get to mark a difficult herbalism check. Yay! He uh, gets this done and then hands it for Mr. Smolak. Here, I'll take the top of the pain. Yeah, 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 I hope so. He takes it and he imbibes it. And the second he imbibes it and it's going down, or it could kill you, but we'll see. <laughs> he gives yeah. you a venomous look. Yeah, and as as you give this venomous look, um, the the effects kick in. Uh, AJ, describe what that actually feels like, if it feels in any particular way other than the pain receding. I imagine once you have such a burning headache as you get from hitting your head really, really harshly, it's like the heat actually lifts a little, and the pain dampens down so you know just a really bad headache but not a migraine headache headache you, you can suddenly just relax a little you can think without feeling like it's killing you mm -hmm. yeah cool so um for the next uh, little for the next 15 minutes or so if, if a check uh, check comes up in that period of time um you just roll and it'll subtract two dice from you when you roll and you just roll another die to to you know counteract that yeah um and let's see skill toolkits uh yeah let's roll a die of fate um aj roll me 1d6 mm. if it comes up one uh you have spent your kit if it comes up anything but one, there... Okay. Fuck you, dice roller! There we are. So, you you spend a lot of, like, your, your plans and so on, trying to make the wound better in the first place, and as that fails, you're kind of like, well, shit, okay, I'm gonna make up for this, I'm going to make him something for the pain, and as you do so, and you, like, empty a bag into your hands, you it's just, like, the last helping of leaves of leaving the bag into your hand. You're like, well, I'm out. Foraging. Come on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, In a need, city. You need to replenish that kit um, before you can uh, use herbalism again without uh, uh, an increased uh, obstacle. You can still use it, but it um, it increases, it doubles the obstacle when you try and use herbalism. Yep. Well, thankfully we can go outside the city to find stuff. Yeah, you could attempt that. No, we will get eaten. We can do it during daylight, you fucking coward. <laughs> you ninny. The sun will lead us then. So, within the, the scope of like 15 minutes, uh, Evelyn returns, um, breaking into the room, um, like looking left, looking right, noticing uh, Nikki, 
clearing the room immediately, going over to you, just standing there, grabbing you by the scruff of your neck and starts yelling at you. Yep. He's yelling at him? Yeah. Yeah. Like, there are only two or three me- it's, it's kind of like listening to a call on a faulty line, where it's like, one or two words break through, and if you're kind of being, if you're kind of being, uh, being aware of what's being said, you may piece together that what she intends to ask him is something along the lines of how did this happen, but it, instead it's like, swear, 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 legible word, swear, 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 legible word. Okay. Minnow looks fascinated at her. Holy shit. <laughs> Jihauji enjoys it very much. Hmm. Uh, it hmm. might die faster, right? Maybe. No, he's carefully saying that the second she tries to breathe, it's just like, you know, the more you shake him, the faster he could die from this, right? She looks at you and says, what? He could die from this? From this? Sure. I can't stop the bleeding in his head. We need a doctor for it. What the fuck are you standing here for then? Go and get a fucking doctor! I don't know where there's a doctor in this city. I just came here as an... Who was his name? <laughs> he looks at... <laughs> the guy who got you. Oh, yeah, going back to him will be great. I sent out one of the boys. That's what he found you, isn't it? He should be going to find a doctor now. I think uh, you, you're referring to, to the person you sent out to find Evelyn and a doctor has returned with Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Oh! And being like, All I right, found well. her! And as you say that, he's kind of like, um, oh right, yeah, sorry, and then he's out again. I wave my hand. In a dismissive way to say, I don't mind, just go and get something, someone. Um, and uh, then... what, uh, what should I say? <sighs> should I bring him here? Yeah, I don't mm. know. You want to go there? Uh, not here. Not here, somewhere else. Uh, he looks to Ev he can't he's still finding it a little hard to think he's still a bit dizzy he looks to Evelyn as if to say think for me please <laughs> uh, she uh, yeah she she looks back at you like she nods um, and in in her mind um, we we kind of we get the impression that that she's like yeah sure I'll do this and then kind of suddenly the res the responsibility of the situation kind of weighs a bit heavily on her and she she hesitates for a moment before turning to the guy. It's like, go out, find someone, tell him what the fuck is up, and then ask him to wait there. You run back to us and get us, and we'll come to you. That's a good idea. And he immediately legs it. And then she looks to, to the two of you, uh, Mino and uh, Zhihao. What the fuck happened? What the actual bloody shits happened? Middle smirks. He pissed off the wrong people. Oh no. The wrong people pissed on us. What happened? Come on, tell me. Uh, the doctor thingy he went to find. Apparently he thinks his stuff is the cause of his, what was it? Nephew's son's death? Nephew. And sent the goons on us. Oh, well, he's fucking dead. Mm. He's a fucking dead man. Oh, he is. It would be easier if the people I'd hired to protect me could actually fucking protect me for a start. Yeah, you immediately <laughs> kind of deflect. A long, long glare. Hey, if I weren't there, you would be dog meat now. You, you definitely, your words deflect Evelyn onto Minnow and Shihao. And she kind of sends the two of you a hateful stare. Um, you get you get the the immediate sensation that were you not standing there being ooky spooky, uh, and did she not have um, experiences with getting too close to Shihao, she would be all up in your shit right now. <laughs> Mino doesn't even realize. He just looks at. Uh, Mr. Smolag with a well. If I weren't there, you would be fucking dog me. 
Does he say that, or is he just does the look just convey that? He says that. If I weren't there, you would have been dead. Oh yeah, great. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure that I'm getting my money's worth paying you to only just keep me alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so at this moment, um, your teacher, Shi uh, Hao, kind of re-enters the conversation and reiterates the question he had like earlier. Like, that is a good point. How did this come to happen? I do not understand. And he looks specifically to you, uh, Shi Hao. How could you let this happen? Who who get who get who got one up on you? Well, Mr. Smolak had neglected to mention that he would be attacked, so I was scouting at the time of the attack. Yeah. The teacher shakes his head uh, in in that way that only a teacher can, like the combination of of I am disappointed and yet I blame only myself for I am your teacher. <laughs> um, and and he, he looks up at you uh, through through old eyes, old old brow furrowed into a my like a a, 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 a like a carpet of wrinkles. Mm. Um, as he, he shakes his head and says, You must learn to be Prepared for this, boy. You must learn. Yeah. He makes a point. I didn't expect the old fucker wouldn't be happy to see me. Didn't his nephew had gone and topped himself, even if it was by my product. That's just the way the world works, though. Sentimental old cunt. I think uh, for for the moment uh, you you kind of get she house teacher off his uh, off his ass um, as he instead he looks to you uh, essentially he's living off your goodwill right so he's just yeah. like he steps off and being like okay so sure and he just nods sagely instead and says well we will get you a doctor and you will get better yeah. yes and then we're gonna find that old git and we're gonna kill him. That, that is so. I, that. Sure, that will happen. I guarantee you that my student here will make up for his plunder. I would be delighted. And next, uh, Mrs. Bird Brain, could you stop turning into a bird in the middle of the fucking street? Why? Because it's unnecessarily flashy. I think Jihau just raises an eyebrow, like, what are you on about? You really can't see the issue in it. Oh, how do you expect for us to make a name for ourselves as people don't know we exist? I don't want a name for myself, that's your bloody idea. Well, then perhaps that is why I'm flashy. Yeah, I, I think your teacher nods at this. Like uh, it, next to she how this this old decrepit man stands, his head starts bobbing up and down slowly. He's like, yes, 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 you are right. And he, I guess, he probably has like a name for you, she how. Uh, he probably has like a, a name that in your native tongue means little calf or something. Oh okay, god. Um, like yes. some something endearing, um, denoting your your obvious status as uh, as his lesser, being that he is your teacher. Um, I don't know exactly what that word would be, but he he called he calls you by that, right? He called little calf, um, and and he looks to you, Minnow, um, and and he he kind of looks gets like a scolding look in his eyes. He says, "No, you did good, you did good. It is not it is not for us to hide our gift." No, but I'm the bloody one who got blamed for his charade by everyone on the street. If you got com if you got compared to your brother, then you are the one in luck. He is far better than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Mino smile. just sends him the longest stare. I do not blame you, child. You had an inferior teacher. <laughs> Can we not 
have this little dispute right now. Can we please get to the business of how we can get sorted and bounce back from this so that I can kill people and start pushing my product around again? That's what you're here for. Please try not to get worked up, sir. Yeah, stay down, you fucking idiot. What? <laughs> It's basically the the teacher and uh, and your subordinate like in chorus asking you to lie the fuck down. <laughs> Just simmer the fuck down, sir. You're bleeding. Mm hmm. Yes. The word the uh, words of a sick man right now. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have a break here, uh, and then we'll come back and get into the whole issue of of actually getting you treated after this. That would be nice if, if it's possible. Alright, so uh, we'll be right back with more Burning Wheel, uh, so see you guys then.